That was muted the whole time. Fuck. Fuck. Sorry. That was muted the whole time. <laughs> that was muted the whole time. Damn it. You guys missed all that. I had this whole banter with my cat.
she was like meowing as soon as I started talking and um, yeah didn't shut the fuck up <laughs> Kyle says welcome to my deaf world that was embarrassing you missed it it was a cute little interaction Kitty kind of pissed me off because as soon as I started talking she woke up and was like meow 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 I'm like nope you're out of here let's go out of here anyway welcome to the etiquette stream like I said wacky hair day today it's a bit crazy today uh, it's what happens when you keep your hair in a high top knot for a few days whatever coronavirus stream who cares so today we're going over etiquette etiquette stream today and if you are watching this on D live that means that it is live live so I can visually um, respond to any questions or comments that we have and I'm gonna be interacting with you via the video went in um, what you guys are talking about in the chat and you can also um, send me some uh, Streamlabs donations which I think are over here right over here or over here Hold on yeah it's over here um, and yeah, today's my last day to get to my goal and I'm only at 11%. My goals have not been working. Um, I have the cheapest simps in the world. I have the cheapest, um, brokest pave higs in the world, except for a few of you. Thank you, Wonder Girl 60s. You are the best. Rainbow, you're the best. Stephen Forex, you're the best. Uh, Fox Mulder, um... I haven't seen Bilbo Metz in a while, but you guys, amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, Sandra, a bunch of you guys, but as far as all these pay pigs people say that I have and simps that I have, apparently, uh, I'm wondering where it's at because, you know, I'm not a very good stripper ethought 11%, man. It's really not that good, so... If you want to help, there is the link there. Let me make the link a little bit bigger, which is a complaint that people have. Whatever, I'm going to get on another screen. It's bigger. Um, but it's streamlabs.com slash Martina Mercota TV. Or you could always go directly to PayPal, which is my email address, Martina Mercota NYC at gmail.com. And you will see the goal grow today. But if you are watching this on YouTube right now, that means it is a YouTube premiere, so it's not live live. However, I will be in the chats with you, um, right there with you, watching along and chatting away. And you can still send super chats. I really, really depend on YouTube for the money because the D Live sucks unless people start really using Streamlabs. It sucks. Um, so you can always send Streamlabs, and this won't grow. However, next time I stream, you will see your contribution show up here. Um, or you could just do a super chat, and that'll show up right away. This fucking cat. Do you hear it? You hear this fucking cat? Jesus Christ. I have to get that cat fixed. It's horrendous. I absolutely hate it. Anyway. Today we are going over etiquette and I was looking through the last time we went over etiquette and I feel it and it was something about visitations and stuff. However, I have this up from last time, which is the invitations, acceptance and regrets. Um, so I'm a little confused why this would be up and I don't see that video on YouTube, but we're going to go over it again. Haven't seen etiquette stuff in a while. Let's just see what's going on, shall we? Now, the thing is, I had to go online and find the Emily Post book in a different format, HTML or something, um, because for some reason when they show these types of things, um, it gets all jumbled in this ebook that I have. So let's look at it. This is how it looks in the ebook, um, and I'll explain. Uh, yeah, so it gets all like jumbled when you, when we start going, oh, actually, why did it clear up? Oh, there it goes. There it goes. This is what I'm talking about. It gets all jumbled and weird. And 
it made it impossible um, to understand. So I went and found the HTML version on the website, and I think I'm going to switch over to that instead. And you can see that format is much, much better. Uh, hold on a second, let me find it. Window capture, are you sure you want to, what? Okay, let's go to, there we go. Fix the size of this a little bit. Um, let's see, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. I might change my picture around, move it over a little bit. That should do it. That should do it. Um, yeah, so the thing is, I do some etiquette stuff. Um, I think it's really important for society and for culture. I think there is a lot of confusion with the right-wing youth. Um, especially males because there's a lot of pressure to not give in um, to women, to not be a simp, to not be chivalrous. It's considered white knighting. And sure, I can agree with all of that and I understand that concept. Um, there is a lot of um, adoration of the wrong females and women that are are poisonous and can be bad for you and they just want to use you and they're they're looking for attention or what have you so okay it's good to be aware of the manipulation the manipulation machine that can occur with women however um people can't seem to discern a good woman from a thought a lot of the times. They get really caught up in that dialogue and that language and the anger towards women and it's very misplaced and they're very young and confused and I think it's really important to remember etiquette uh, because that helps you kind of hone it in. Um, okay, so it's like if you're a spiritual person and you want to read the Bible or look into alchemy or whatever it is, it kind of helps hone you in. Um, there can be extremist and cult-like practices, and then there can be people that have totally lost their, their way, and then, you know, you kind of look at it again, and it can help hone you and center you. And I think that's what etiquette does. Um, it allows you to be polite. Uh, not pol oh, yeah, it allows you to interact with people um, in a way where they are appreciated, they appreciate you, uh, and there's a respect for others all around. That's what etiquette is about, is a respect for others. Now, etiquette and chivalry doesn't mean being a doormat and being walked all over. That is totally different. That is not okay <laughs> in etiquette. You still have your own stern hand and beliefs and you don't let people walk all over you. However, um, when you can understand concepts of being polite to others around you. It makes not only you a personable person, it makes people like you, it makes life much better um, to interact with. For example, when, you know, someone says hello to you on the street, it's not always a bad thing. It's quite nice. Like I'm in the country right now and when we are driving around, you know, looking at houses and nature and stuff, and there's like, you know, an old man, he waves or lady walking her dog there they wave so it's quite nice to have that interaction back and forth and be kind and polite and you know you give that wave or nod back and it feels quite nice me and my sister were like oh oh man waved to us that was so cute like oh hi um so you're spreading love and joy and that's what we want for society and for culture if you're on the right all we seem to be doing is tearing down and tearing down and complaining about things and we aren't really replacing stuff that we're complaining about with positive things so 
this is something that I think is a good positive thing and information. We get we chit chat about it. And Emily Post is the leading author on etiquette. Her book was published in 1922. Um, so it is copyright free and we will go over it. It's one of my favorites. I actually have a hard copy book here that I might want to pull out from like over a decade ago. Um, but yeah, anyway, let me see who we got in here. We got donuts gave an ice cream. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, let me see. Okay. Yeah, okay. Cool, all right. You guys are just chatting it up about chivalry and that balance uh, between men and women. That's good, good conversation. Um, let's continue, shall we? Um, so, where are we at? We're already on chapter 11, are we? Damn. Okay, well, invitations, acceptances, and regrets. The formal invitation. As an inheritance from the days when Mrs. Brown presented her compliments and begged that Mrs. Smith would do her the honor to take a dish of tea with her, we still, notwithstanding the present flagrant disregard of old-fashioned conventions, send our formal invitations, acceptances, and regrets in the prescribed punctiliousness of the third person. All formal invitations, whether they are to be engraved or be written by hand and their acceptances uh, and regrets, are inevitably in the third person and good usage permits of no deviation from this form. Okay, that's an important distinction to make. So formal invitations, um, whether they are engraved or to be written by hand, um, they are in the third person and their acceptances and regrets are in the third person. Um, that's really interesting. You would think that it's super personable to personal to really be heartfelt and warm um, about it and say, you know, I'm so sorry, blah, 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 which whatever, that works today, I guess. But we're reading Emily Pose from 1922 and they are saying it should be in the third person. So that's an interesting distinction to make. <clears throat> oh yeah, this reminded me actually, guys, remember when we went through like things not to say and there was the what it was it the door slammer remember the door slammer i was telling my friends on twitter about that i have to screen cap the door slammer after this oh my god remind me that it's so funny um <clears throat> okay wedding invitations the invitation to the ceremony is engraved on the front sheet of white note paper the smartest at present is that which is ra a raised margin or plate mark at the top of the sheet uh, the crest, if the family is a bride, uh, the family of the bride has the right to use one, is embossed without color. Otherwise, the invitation bears no device. The engraving may be in script, block, shaded block, or Old English. Ooh. The invitation to the ceremony should always uh, request the honor of your presence and never the pleasure of your company. Honor is spelt the old-fashioned way with the U instead of uh, just no you. Um, I love that. So Jack and I are already married, but we are going to do an American celebration when he comes here. So that could be super fun uh, to do when he's here. Just to make things all proper. Why not? Uh, enclosed in two envelopes. <clears throat> two envelopes are never used except for wedding invitations or announcements, but wedding invitations and all accompanying cards are always enclosed first in an inner envelope that has no, um, let's, let's look up what that word means since we're here. Remember, always look up things you don't know. Mucilage. Mucilage. 
Okay, I don't think that's right. Oh, okay, maybe it is. A viscous secretion or bodily fluid, uh, fluid. A substance extracted as a viscous or gelatinous solution from plant roots, seeds, etc., and is used in medicines and adhesives. An adhesive solution, gum or glue. Ah, okay. So, two envelopes are never used except for wedding invitations or announcements, but wedding invitations and all accompanying cards are always include, uh, enclosed first in an inner envelope that has no mucilage, no glue uh, on the flap and is uh, superscribed Mr. and Mrs. James Great Lake without an address. Uh, this is enclosed in an outer envelope, which is sealed and addressed. Hmm. Okay, Mr. and Mrs. Jameson Great Lake. Jameson Great Lake, 24 Michigan Avenue, Chicago. To those who are already asked to the church, no house invitation is enclosed. Um, the proper form for an invitation to a church ceremony is... Um, this is, see, this is the church ceremony. This is what we're going to do. I don't know if Jack is watching, but this is what we're going to do. I'm not going to spend a fortune, because we're already married, but it would be quite nice to have some proper, oh, to have some proper invitations for the church ceremony would be quite nice. Okay, so the church invitation form one, Mr. and Mrs. John Huntington Smith request the honor of your presence at the marriage of their daughter, wait, yeah, their daughter Mary Catherine to Mr. James Smartlington on Tuesday, the 1st of November at 12 o'clock at St. John's Church in the city of New York. Um, Okay, cool. Um, and then form number two, Mr. and Mrs. John Huntington Smith request the honor of Miss Pauline Towns uh, presence at the marriage of their daughter, Mary Catherine, to Mr. James Smartlington uh, on Tuesday, the 1st of November at 12 o'clock at St. John's Church. Cute. The size of invitation is five and one eighth wide by seven and three eighths deep. Um, when the parents issue the invitations for a wedding at a house other than their own, the request would be like this. Mr. and Mrs. Richard Littlehouse request the honor of blank presence at the marriage of their daughter Betty to Mr. Frederick Robinson on Saturday the 5th of November the 5th, the 5th of November um, at four o'clock at the house of Mr. and Mrs. Sterlington Tuxedo Park New York RSVP lovely so she's just plain Betty just plain Betty. No variation is permissible in the form of wedding invitation. Whether 50 guests are to be invited or 5,000, the paper, the engraving, and the, and the wording and the double envelope are precisely the same. Love it. Church card of admittance in cities or wherever the general public is not to be admitted, a card of about the size of a small visiting card, remember the visiting cards that we went over, fantastic, is enclosed with the church invitation. Please present this card at St. John's Church on Tuesday, the 1st of November. Cards to reserved pews, the family and very intimate friends who are to be seated in especially de designated pews, please present this to an usher, pew number blank, on Thursday, the 9th of May. Lovely. It's like, here's my pew card. Here's my church card. Let me in. Here's my pew card. Seat me. Thank you. 
Engraved pew cards are uh, ordered only for very big weddings. Oh, okay. Engraved pew church. Wait. Engraved pew cards are only. Excuse me. There's no only in that sentence. Engraved pew cards are ordered only. Oh, there is an only. Ordered only for very big weddings where 20 or more pews are uh, to be reserved. The more casual custom at all small and uh, many big weddings is for the mother of the bride and the mother of the bridegroom each to write on her personal uh, visiting card. Pew number seven, Mrs. John Huntington Smith for West 36th Street. I love all these cards. A card for the reserved enclosure, but no special pew is often inscribed within the ribbons. Hmm. Invitation to the house. The invitation to the breakfast or reception following the church ceremony is engraved on a card to match the paper of the church invitation and is the size of the latter after it is folded for the envelope. Mr. and Mrs. Huntington Smith request the pleasure of Mr. and Mrs. James Great Lakes Company on Tuesday, the 1st of November at half after four o'clock. Ah, that sounds like the way Jack writes, tells time at 4 West 36th Street, RSVP. That's their home? Lovely. 4 West 36th Street. That's, yeah, probably like 6th Avenue and 36th Street. No, it can't be. That's like Herald Square area. I don't know. Ceremony and reception invitation in one. Occasionally, uh, especially for a country wedding, the invitation uh, to the breakfast or reception is added to the one to the ceremony. Mr. and Mrs. Mrs. Alexander Chatterton request the honor of Mr. and Mrs. Worldly's presence at the marriage of their daughter, Hester. Hester, look at that name to Mr. James Town Jr. <laughs> on Tuesday, the 1st of June at three o'clock at St. John's Church and afterwards at Sunny Lawn Ridgefield, RSVP. Okay. Or the invitation reads at 12 o'clock at St. John's Church and afterwards at breakfast uh, at Sunny Lawn, but afterwards to the reception at Sunny Lawn is wrong. Okay. The invitation to a house wedding um, is precisely the same. Oh, Pablo's here. Hello, hello. Um, so the invitation to a house wedding is precisely the same, except that at Sunny Lawn or at 4 West 36th Street is put in place of at St. John's Church and an invitation to stay uh, on at a house to which the guest is already invited is not necessary. The train card. If the wedding is to be in the country, a train card is enclosed. A special train will leave Grand Central Station. I love that this is all based in New York. Totally get it. A special train will leave Grand Central Station at 12.45 p.m., arriving at Ridgefield at 2.45. Returning train will leave Ridgefield at... What is Ridgefield? At 5.10 p.m., arriving New York at 7.02 p.m. Show this card at the gate. I love it. Sounds so elegant and fancy. Invitation to reception and not to ceremony. Harsh. It sometimes happens that the bride prefers none but her family at the ceremony and a big reception. This plan is chosen where the mother of the bride or other very near relatives is an invalid. The ceremony may take place at bedside or it may be that the invalid can go down to the drawing room with only the immediate families and is unequal to the presence of many people. Under these circumstances, the invitations to the breakfast or reception are sent on sheets of note paper like that used for church invitations, but the wording is Mr. and Mrs. Grantham Jones request the pleasure of your company at the wedding breakfast of their daughter, Muriel. 
These names, Hester, Muriel, and Mr. Burlingham, Burlingame, Joan Ross Jr. on Saturday, the 1st of November at 1 o'clock at 4 East 38th Street. The favor of an answer is requested. Cute. The pleasure of your company is requested in this case instead of the honor of your presence. the written wedding invitation. If a wedding is to be so small that no invitations are engraved, the notes of invitation should be personally written by the bride. Yay! <laughs> Pablo says they need better names like Guan. All right. You guys can make up the names if you want because she made them up and they're all like 1922 names. Daguan and Shamika. Okay. 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 So a written wedding invitation, um, is something that is just like small and chill and is written by the bride herself. Um, Sally dear. <laughs> I love that dear instead of dear Sally, it's Sally dear. Um, and then it's affectionately written by Helen, which is Apparently the official name of my cat that my sisters made, but I did not approve that name. It's apparently named Helen. No, her name's Kitty Cat. Um, <laughs> Deguan wants to wife up that bitch Shamika. Okay, so Helen would say, uh, Shamika dear, our wedding is to be on Thursday the 10th at half past 12. Christ Church chant Chantry. Of course we want you and Jack and the children. Um, oh, excuse me, Daguan, excuse me. Uh, of course we want you and Daguan and the children, and we want all of you to come afterwards to Aunt Patty's for a bite to eat and to wish us luck. Affectionately, Helen. <laughs> oh, I love that there's Aunt Patty in there. Dear Mrs. <laughs> Taquan has kids. Dear Mrs. What's her name? Shaniqua? Shamika. Dear Mrs. Shamika. Um, Dick and I are to be married at Christchurch Chantry. At Chantry? What is that? At noon on Thursday the 10th. We both want you and Mr. Daguan to come to the church and afterward for a very small breakfast to my aunt's uh, Miss Patty at 2 Park Avenue. With much love from both of us. Affectionately, Helen. Um. <laughs> Wedding announcements. If no general invitations were issued to the church um, and announcement engraved on, on note paper like that of the invitation to the ceremony is sent to the entire visiting list of both the brides and the groom's family. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Maynard Barnes. Does, does Daguan have a last name? It's important here. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Maynard Barnes, God, these names, have the honor to announce the marriage of their daughter Priscilla, I actually like that name, to Mr. Eben Hoyt Lemming on Tuesday, the 26th of April, 1922. Oh, they wrote out the year, 1922. Um in the city of New York, naturally. Daquan Jackson, okay, okay. Okay, so in the case of Daquan's second marriage, okay? Okay, this is his second baby mama, uh, who he's marrying. The invitations to <laughs> Jay, Mr. Lemming, <laughs> what a loser. Okay, so Daguan's second marriage, guys. The invitations to the marriage of a, ooh, a widow. No, 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 Daguan did not die. Okay, let's 
Okay, hold on. Invitations to the marriage of a widow, if she is very young, are sent in the name of her parents, exactly as were the invitations to her first wedding. Except that her name, instead of being merely Priscilla, is now written Priscilla Barnes Lemming. Thus, Mr. and Mrs. Maynard Barnes request the honor of your presence at the marriage of their daughter, Priscilla Barnes Lemming, to etc. De Guan. Um, so, announcements. Announcements. For young widow's marriage are also the same as for the first wedding. Wait. For a young widow's marriage are also the same for a first wedding. Mr. and Mrs. Maynard Barnes have the honor to announce the marriage of their daughter, Priscilla Barnes Lemming, to Mr. Worthington, Worthington Adams, etc. But the announcement of the marriage of a widow of mature years is engraved on note paper and reads... Mrs. Priscilla Barnes Lemming and Mr. Worthington Adams have the honor to announce their marriage on Monday, the 2nd of November at Saratoga Springs, New York. Oh my God, I know that. So that's interesting because I think today, even people with their first wedding, generally, I think, do it the way that an older widower would write it. They say, like Mrs. Martina Marcota and Mr. Jack Buckby have the honor to announce their wedding on Monday, blah, 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 their marriage, blah, blah, blah. That's apparently the announcement of a widow of mature years getting married. Um, so it's interesting, interesting. Okay. Sorry, hold on, this fingernail. Like, I'm tearing off the fake nails because I don't have my equipment. I left it in New York City. So it's really irritating because I can't do my nails now. And now, like, the fake nail stuff are, like, coming off. And it, like, rips apart your real fingernail. Ugh. And it's, like, really fucked up. Um, okay cards of addresses if the bride and groom wish to inform their friends of their future address especially in cities not covered by the social register it is customary to enclose a card with the announcement mr and mrs worth adams will be at home after the first of december at 12 uh at 25 Algernley place um okay or merely their visiting card with their new address on the lower corner. Yeah, guys, remember these visiting cards? We all got to get visiting cards now, okay? Let's make them visiting cards. How are you guys doing? You all right? We only have like 10 people in here. It's terrible. It's terrible stuff. Okay. <laughs> Someone was telling me there's no sound on. Yeah. Okay. No sound, McQueena. All right. Okay. Yeah. Visiting cards. We got to get in on those visiting cards. Pablo says that his business cards will have a naked lady on it, in it. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. It'll probably do you well doing that, Pablo. And on the other side will be the one. Okay. Jay, I have my um my streaming blanket on. Okay. Invitation to wedding anniversary. Jack I can do that too. For a wedding anniversary celebration, the year of the wedding and the present year are usually stamped across the top of an invitation. Sometimes the couple's initials are added. Oh my, 1892 to 1922. Mr. and Mrs. Alvin Johnson request the pleasure of Mr. and Mrs. Duguan. 
Duguan's, Jackson's company um, at the 25th anniversary of their marriage on Wednesday, the 1st of June at 9 o'clock, 24 Austin Avenue, RSVP. Um, okay, and then we get to answering a wedding invitation. Let's see how that looks. I'll bring it down a little for you guys. Answering a wedding invitation. An invitation to the church only requires no answer what, um, whatever. An invitation to the reception or breakfast is answered on the first page of a sheet of note paper, and although uh, it is written by hand, the spacing of words must be followed as though they were engraved. This is the form of acceptance. Mr. and Mrs. Robert Gilding Jr. accept the pleasure, accept with pleasure Mr. and Mrs. John Huntington Smith's kind invitation for Tuesday, the 1st of June. Oh, I love that. The regret reads, Mr. and Mrs. Richard Brown regret that they are unable to accept Mr. and Mrs. John Huntington Smith's kind invitation for Tuesday, the 1st of June. Stephen who don't worry about it I had a I had a very very simple wedding involved in none of this but I think that when we come to America when he comes to America we'll have a family church thing so I get to have round two yay um oh hey Rezekai nice to see you on D live cool cool Okay, that's actually really nice answers. I like the answers and even the regret. It's quite nice. Other formal invitations. All other formal invitations are engraved, never printed on cards of thin white matte Bristol board, either plain or plate marked with those for wedding reception cards. Note paper such as that used for wedding invitations is occasionally but rarely preferred. Monograms, addresses, personal devices are not used on engraving, uh, engraved invitations. I mean, this reminds me of like how ridiculous wedding invitations have gotten where people create like this whole package and it's this big thing. And look at what the proper etiquette is. It's like, maybe if you want to be fancy, you like emboss the like, your family crest at the top of the page. It's really it. Just say plain white piece of paper. <clears throat> okay. Monograms, addresses, personal devices are not used uh, on engraving engraved invitations. The size of the card of invitation varies with personal preference from four and a half to six inches in width and from three to four and a half inches in height. Most the most graceful proportions is three units in height to four in width. The lettering is a matter of personal choice, but the plainer the design, the better. This is what people don't understand. It's so tacky to make things overly done. Plainer, the better. Um, scrolls and ornate trimmings are bad taste always. See? Um, no... It's always bad taste. Punctuation is used only after each letter of the RSVP, and it is absolutely correct to use small letters for the SVP, capitalized RSVP are permissible, but um, best, fastidious? fastidious people prefer big R, small SVP. Hmm. Interesting. Fastidious. Fastidious. Very attentive to and concerned about accuracy and detail. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Fast Fastidious. Fastidious. Very concerned about matters of cleanliness. Hmm. Oh, I like that. You always learn something new. Um, invitation to a ball. Oh, how fun. I have had an invitation to a ball before once or twice. The word ball is never used uh, accepting an invitation, uh, accepting in an invitation to a, 
The word ball is never used excepting an invitation to a public one, or at least a semi-public one, such as may be given by a committee or a charity or club or association of sort. For example, the committee of the Greenwood Club re requests the pleasure of your company at a ball to be held in the Greenwood Clubhouse on the evening of November the 7th at 10 o'clock for the benefit of the neighborhood hospital. Tickets, $5. Hmm, that's a cheap little ball. Um, mm, mm, mm. Invitations to a private ball, no matter whether the ball is to be given in a home, a uh, private home, house, or whether the hostess has engaged an entire floor of the biggest hotel in the world, and announce merely that Mr. and Mrs. Somebody will be at home and uh, the word dancing is added almost as though it were an afterthought in the lower left corner. The words at home being slightly larger than those of the rest of the invitation. When both at and home are written with a capital letter, this is the most punctilious and formal invitation that it is possible to send. <gasps> It is engraved in script usually on a card of white bristol board about five and a half inches wide and three and three quarters of an inch high. Like the wedding invitation, it has an embossed crest without color or nothing. The precise form is Mr. and Mrs. Titherington D. Poister, Poister at home on Monday the 3rd of January at 10 o'clock on East 50th Street, the favor of an answer is requested. Dancing. Oh, so cute. I love it. I really love that. Or Mr. and Mrs. Davis Jefferson at home in capitals on Monday, the 3rd of January at 10 o'clock, Town and Country Club. Kindly send reply to 3 Mount Vernon Square. Dancing. I like the little dancing. <laughs> if preferred, the above invitation may be engraved in block or shaded block type. <clears throat> okay. So then we have the a ball for a debutante daughter. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with the word debutante, but there are things that are called debutante balls as well. Um, Debutant. An upper class young woman making her first appearance in fashionable society. Oh, I want to be young and fabulous again. I want to be a debutante. Yeah, they tend to wear white, like bride, bridal white. Um, yeah, it's a debutante ball. How lovely. to be young again. Well, I'll just have to go to a regular ball. And they know how to dance and stuff. How cute is that? I hate that it shows you stuff like this instead of like, let's go to Bing. Um, yeah, it's a debutante ball. They all tend to wear white. Lovely, lovely gloves. Opera length gloves. So cute. Oh, I love the old ones. These don't look like debutantes. This looks like older. Look at these men. The men are supposed to be young too. Are these like their dads? There you go. There's the young men. Yeah. It is Pablo, except it's not for their birthday. It's for, um, like, it's a debutante ball. So it's, like, not for one person to be glorified and ever, like, be spoiled brat. It's, like, a ball that, like, 
all the young people like attend. It's for like all the young like socialite girls um, making their appearances out in public. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's like that around the same time, but it's not for one person. It's like a general ball for them all. Cute. Oh, let's look at these old ones. Oh, I love the old ones so much. There's something about that. Look at this old debutante ball. I see some houndstooth, that's not allowed. Yeah, see this like dancing and stuff. This is this is culture, man. This is what culture is about, like our Western culture. And it's not about, um, it's not about, you know, trying to be cool and like hate on women or whatever. It's like, this is what normal functioning human, like young adults do in society. They they congregate, they get together, and in high society, they have balls, and they have this debutante ball, and they get to meet other young people their age and start figuring out who, who they want to marry. It's really cute. Really, Jay? I love houndstooth. Anyway, let's get back to it. Yeah, ball for debutante daughter. Um, very occasionally, invitation is worded, Mr. and Mrs. Davis Jefferson, Miss Alice Jefferson at home. Okay, so it's like the parents and the daughter at home. It's a ball. Mm. <laughs> I know. If they have a social media account, they're e-girls, so high society e-girls. Um, if the daughter is a debutante and the ball is for her, they do have their own ball? I guess they do get their own ball sometimes. I know there's like the debutante ball, which is kind of like a general ball for all of them, but okay. Well, you know, I'm not a part of high society, so whatever, I don't know these things. Never, oh, I've been to a ball, but it was like charity gala, and I'm like, I was invited to some like Russian royal ball thing in DC, and never went, and uh, let me see. I think there's been a f I don't know. I guess that's it. My ball gown is in the UK though. If the daughter is a debutante and the ball is for her, but it is not strict. Oh, maybe it's like, yeah, she's invited to the ball. I don't know. Let's figure this out. Okay. If the daughter is a debutante and the ball is for her, but it is not strictly correct to have any names, but those of the host and his wife above the words at home, the proper form of invitation when the ball is to be given for a debutante is as follows. Mr. and Mrs. De Pusier, Poister, Pusier, it looks like pussy. Um, request the pleasure of Miss Rosalie Gray's company at a dance in honor of their daughter, Miss Alice D. Poister on Monday evening, the 3rd of January at 10 o'clock, um, 1 East 50th Street, um, RSVP. I guess they get their own balls sometimes. Freaking lucky bastards. Mr. and Mrs. Titherington De, De Poister. Miss Alice D. Poister requests the pleasure of Mr. and Mrs. Great Lakes Company on Monday evening, the 3rd of January at 10 o'clock, 1 East 50th Street, dancing, RSVP. The form most often used by fashionable hostesses in New York and Newport is, oh, I always forget about Newport, hell yeah. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Gliding request the pleasure of blank company at a small dance on Monday, the 1st of January at Ott Ott Fifth Avenue. Even if given for a debutante daughter, her name does not appear and it is called a small dance, whether it is really small or big. 
The request for a reply is often omitted since everyone is supposed to know that an answer is necessary. But if the dance or dinner or whatever the entertainment is to be is given at one address and the hostess lives at another, both addresses are always given. Mr. and Mrs. Sydney Old Name requests the pleasure of Deguan, Deguan's company, the Guan Jackson's company um, at a dance on Monday evening, the 6th of January at 10 o'clock. The Fitz Cherry kindly send response to Brook Meadows, L I, Long Island? What is that? L I. If the dance is given for a young friend who is not a relative, Mr. and Mrs. Old Name's invitation should. Um, say request the pleasure of Daquan Jackson's company at dance at a dance in honor of Miss Rosalie Gray. Very plain and simple. Very plain and simple. You're damn right they want Daquan there. I know. I know. Tis true. Tis true. Okay, guys. I've been streaming for an hour. Okay, and. I'm still at 11% here, okay? So I need all my simps and pay pigs to really get their shit together. I'm like, let's make something happen with this graph, okay? Okay. Apparently I got all the simps and pay pigs. Don't know where they're at though. Hit me up with the Streamlabs link. It's streamlabs.com slash Martina Mercota TV, okay? Just check my notifications. Maybe I'll have a little break. I don't know. I don't know. Mm. Oh, Rezekai sent something in PayPal instead of Streamlabs by mistake. Oh, thank you. Okay, great. That that's good. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rezekai. Holy shit. Thank you, man. Definitely would have helped. You could bring the bad bunny streamer personality out. What does that mean? Rezekai, bless you, bless you, thank you. That really means a lot. I feel better. You can hear the cat again. <laughs> Oh my god, cat's so annoying. <laughs> Alright, this is the time I will check in with you guys. You don't know who Bad Bunny is? No, I do not. I'm sorry. I don't really know anything about streaming or technology or internet or gaming. Um, I think I'm going to do a solitaire stream. She's a Twitch streamer. Oh, yeah, I didn't know that. Twitch, I don't know anything about other streamers, I don't know anything about gaming. The only thing I was gonna do when everyone was like trying to tell me to like do gaming streams, I was like, no, no, I have two ideas though. I have one idea about not having played games since the 90s, and it could be fun, but um, I think that my other idea was to just straight up stream like games I do play, which is game. Solitaire. It's the only thing I'll play. She could craft costumes on stream sometime to show stuff to use. That's true. I could. I could. Um, I just have so many haters that like make sure that I don't get any work and try to blacklist, blacklist, blacklist me, but then they like steal my aesthetics and my looks and it's like why am I just going to give away my, like, crafting ideas for free? Bitches just steal my looks. 
and teach you how to do it. Mm -mm. Minecraft, no, I don't play Minecraft either. I've never played Minecraft. Um, I have played Doom back in like the 90s when it was like on a computer with the like, just the four like arrows. I remember feeling kind of nauseous moving around in that Doom different rooms. I think that's what the game was. I don't know. Um, but yeah, Solitaire. That's it, Solitaire. <laughs> so the only game I'm gonna play. Maybe Tetris. Solitaire and Tetris. That's what I play. Ah, Rezekai says work time gotta run. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Bless you, bless you. I hope I can do something for you sometime in the world. Alright. I think I'm gonna take a break and have a snack and a drink. And be right back. And we can continue with what we are working on here. So we have um, when and how one may ask for an invitation for a stranger. Hmm. Okay. Card of general invitation, the dinner invitation, invitations to reception and teas, the formal invitation, which is written. Lots of fun different invitations. Maybe we'll have a laugh about some things. We'll get Duguan in there somewhere. Um. Yes, Super Mario Brothers on the NES is the last games that I would play on an actual device. That, um, Solstice, a game called Sol Solstice. Oh man, you guys gotta check out Solstice. Nah, man, I'm not... I just like solitaire, really. Let me show you guys what Solstice looked like. Back in my day. Maybe I should just do a gaming stream and just talk about all this stuff. Because, like, Pablo's really good with all this kind of retro shit. He's, like, my age. Soul. Soul. How do I... Oh my god, I don't know how to spell Solstice, guys. How do I spell Solstice? Soul. I'm not going to embarrass myself and try to spell it out in front of you guys. Hold on. Ah! So, it's this. It's kind of a tricky one. I'm a terrible speller. I studied math, so spelling is illogical. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Yeah, it's the Nez. Yeah. The music is so cool for this game, too. 1989. Damn. Oh my god. Oh my god. This takes me back. Major Gruber trying to like steal my my shit. Steal me. Yeah, and then there's like these different Oh there's potions! There's like alchemy potions. Yes, this music. It was really creepy and cool. Very alchemy actually. Potion. The keys and potions. So healthy. Yellow potion. 
See, this music always reminded me of like the Ace of Bass like kind of sound sometimes. In Ace of Bass, they would have like these video game kind of sounds. So like Ace of Bass. Is that not Ace of Bass or what? Anyway, all right. Acid Bass was my jam, by the way. I don't know if you guys realize, but they're kind of right wing. It's true. True story. They are. Um, all right. I'm going to take a like, quick break just because. <laughs> Look at you showing your age. You know what? I'm, I'm not having any shame about it. All these fucking Zoomers are trying to do the whole, like, ooh, 80s, 90s aesthetic. Like, bitch, you don't even remember those times, okay? Those were my times, okay? I am that. So, you can call me old, but I know those real aesthetics that you're trying to go for. Yeah, that's... That was my point, BLC586. Yeah, that they were... They were kind of something. They were based. They were ace of bases. Um, but yeah, just have a think about that. I'm gonna, I don't know, just have a quick break for a second, but I'm around, so I'll check in on you guys. And, um, don't go anywhere. Well, now I have 21 people in here. Was it because I just put on a video game? Really? Is that how, like, DLive works? Like, as soon as someone sees video game shit, they're like, what's that? Because <laughs> I was talking about etiquette and no one gave a shit. And now there's, like, more people in here. Damn it. I should just talk about video game. I should just video game stream it. I want to see what happens here. Is this how I get people into a stream? Just play some video games? Alright, we'll do retro video game. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to premiere this for YouTube and Pablo. Alright. This is what we'll do. We'll have a chat in Discord about what retro video games we can stream about. Retro video game stream. Okay, my number one, I don't know if this is retro, but it's solitaire. Solitaire. And then I got um Tetris. And then we have Solstice. Still can't figure out how to spell it. Dun, 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 dun. Can't wait to show my sister this. She's gonna freak. Um, cool. Alright. Alright, guys. What do you want me to do? Should we have a quick break? Are you guys all gonna get out of here? There's a small free game that has authentic Pac-Man, asteroids, space invaders, etc. Yeah, okay, yeah, I remember those. I remember those. Yeah, but like, I'm not gonna just try to be edgy. I'm gonna like, I'm gonna talk about my games for my time. Alright, so I'm gonna do another NES one, the Super Mario Brothers, but everyone's familiar with that. It's kind of boring. Um, plus, I don't have any gaming systems at all. Um, yeah. I've never bought a gaming system. Um, so I think it has to be limited to computer games, which Solitaire and Tetris can do. Solstice is the NES, but uh, I think I'm just going to bring up some videos about it or whatever and just see what we can do with that and kind of just like aesthetically watch them. Super Mario Brothers 10 Kung Fu more? No. Nope, nope, nope. Not happening. You can do an emulator, Martina? I don't know what that means. Pablo's saying emulators. I don't know. You guys are saying words. I don't know what they mean. But that'll be a bitch for you setting it up. Yeah, no. 
Sorry. I'll play, like, actual things I can do on the computer, and then we'll look at, like, aesthetics of stuff and just, like, chit-chat about memories. This emulator. I'll write that down, but, like, fuck off with your fancy-ass gaming shit. Emulator technology and stuff. You know what? We joke around a lot about how shit I am with technology, but I'm gonna have to brag a little bit right now. But I'm actually not that bad for my age because, first of all, like Rob, Mystery Rob has said, we joke about me being a boomer about technology, but when he saw me in person on my computer and I had to finish work real quick, because, yeah, I had a real job, people, um, and I was a video producer for, like, three years, so when I was making editing videos, I was, I'm on, I know how to use Adobe, you know, and I'm, I'm on all the different kinds of Adobes, and I'm on Premiere, and I'm like, cranking shit out, I'm listening to things double time, triple time, I'm like doing all this stuff and he's like, whoa, you're like pretty amazing with that. So I'm pretty good with some software of things. Um, but when it goes like outside of that realm, I really don't know like what you're talking about anymore. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm pretty good with that. And then I also have to brag because I've been homeschooling my niece and let me tell you, getting in on Zoom conversations with a bunch of like boomer teachers and parents I just wanted to like cringe so hard it was like oh my god guys you know they're like where's the mute button can you mute yourself and I'm like oh my god these people these people need help like how are they trying to do school online right now like really and then like in the emails I'm just like okay where's this information like what like what is this and it's like oh that's in in this thing and you got to click this link and there's this password and then it's like skipping around the different gmails don't work and it's like no no guys like you don't know what you're fucking doing here like holy shit this is such like like this is like your wine aunt and like boomer i don't know dad and stuff trying to like teach school on the computer it was terrible and i just felt like such a like zoomer pro i was like oh my god these people Anyway. I wish I could just like play this for you while I'm gone, but like I don't want you guys to like see me or if the camera's on right now. Oh, got the eye twitch. I think I need a drink. Got the eye twitch. Alright guys, just hang out, hang out in the chat. I'll I'll be with you guys in a second. Got the eye twitch. I think that means I need to hydrate. BRB. Copyright free commercial. Okay. See you guys in a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. We're gonna continue. Ah, I hate when I do that with my forehead. <sighs> okay, bye.
into the slot. It is Chronicles of Riddick. Chronicles of Riddick. Every morning I wake up and open palm slam a VHS into the slot. It is Chronicles of Riddick. Riddick. And right then and there I start doing the moves alongside with the main character, Riddick. 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 And right then and there I start doing the moves alongside with the main character, Riddick. 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 I do every move and I do every move hard. Making whoosh and sound when I slam down some necro bastards or even when I mess up technique. Not many can say they escaped the galaxy's most dangerous prison. I killed you.
Okay. Perfect timing. Just finished my snack. <sighs> okay. Uh, where were we? How are you guys doing? Um... We were looking at invitations. Oh, dear Lord, this cat. Can someone get her? Just fucking crazy. Um, when and how one may ask for an invitation for a stranger? One may never ask for an invita invitation for oneself anywhere. Yeah, it's kind of rude. And one may not ask for an invitation to a luncheon or a dinner for a stranger. But an invitation for any general entertainment may be asked for a stranger, especially for a house guest. Oh. Just get shit stuck in my teeth. Example. Dear Mrs. Worldly, a young cousin of mine, David Blakely from Chicago, is staying with us. May Pauline, oh, Pauline, may Pauline take him to your dance on Friday. If it will be inconvenient for you to include him, please do not hesitate to say so frankly. Very sincerely yours, Caroline Robinson Town. I kind of like that letter. Oh! Got a little something. What is this? What is this? Uh, Stephen, three bucks. Cool. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Okay, you guys are figuring out. You're figuring it out. You got it. You got it. Our little pentacle there. Stephen donated three dollars. He said, "I'm glad I found someone like you who appreciates true art like me." It's sad. Um, Carnival in Venice. Carnival in Venice was canceled this year. I love watching the hard work people put into their costumes. Also, let us meet your kitty. <laughs> Steven, I'm so glad to have met you too. I, I guess T Live really worked out for me today. Um, it's really, really great to have some new people that appreciate art and culture. Uh, that is really sa sad that Carnival was canceled. I guess everything's going to be canceled for a while, huh? Um... Yeah, I was a performance artist in New York City. You should check out some other streams. I wonder if they're still up here. What do I have? Replays? Let me see. Replays are deleted after three days. But it's on YouTube. If you check me out on YouTube, Martina Mercota, you can see some of the other stream I did recently. Uh, my alter ego performing persona is Lady Alchemy. So you can always look up Lady Alchemy. Um, and... Yeah, check out some of my artwork there. You you could see some of my artwork in the commercial. That was me. That was Lady Alchemy. And in the intros and the outros, that's some Lady Alchemy work. And yeah, I love it. I love costumes and I love theater. I love stagecraft. It's really, really fun stuff. So I really appreciate finding a new friend as well. Hello. And as far as the cat, sure. She's quiet right now, but if she starts meowing by the door i'll come get her and show you but she's very very cute she looks like a kitten she's not she's in heat right now but she's a very very tiny cat so she's super pretty and cute except when she's meowing um the only good thing that was canceled is coachella <laughs> that's funny cool i mean i was canceled <laughs> okay yeah, no, it really means a lot. I really appreciate people like that can appreciate art and culture and stuff because a lot of people, especially on the right, do not. Um, anyway, so we have... Oh, wait, so there was that sample invitation for a stranger where there was someone that said, hey, um, you know, a cousin of mine is coming in to stay with us. May uh, Pauline, I think it's like perhaps a daughter, um, take him to your dance on Friday. If it's inconvenient to include him, please don't hesitate to say so frankly. 
Um, and the answer is Mrs. Town. I shall be delighted to have Pauline bring Mr. Blakely on the 10th. Sincerely yours, Edith Worldly. Um, or a man might write for an invitation to a friend, but a very young girl should not ask for an invitation for a man or anyone, since it is more fitting that her mother ask for her. An older girl might say to Mrs. Worldly, my cousin is staying with us. May I bring him to your dance? Or if she knows Mrs. Worldly um, very well, she might send a message by telephone. Miss Town would like to know whether she may bring her cousin, Mr. Michigan, to Mrs. Worldly's dance. Okay. Card of general invitation. Invitations to important entertainments are nearly always especially engraved so that nothing is written except the name of the person invited, but for the hostess who entertains constantly, a card which is engraved in blank, uh, so it may serve for dinner, luncheon, dance, garden party, musical, or whatever she may care to give is indispensable. The spacing of the model shown below, the proportion of the words and the size of the card are especially good. So you can make like a bunch of general invitations that are blank and then fill them in um, by hand. Mrs. Stevens requests the pleasure of blank company at blank on blank at blank o'clock to Elm Place. Pretty standard general invitation. And again, when we go over this, we don't generally do the like actual physical cards and invitations and um, not too much anymore, unless it's like a wedding invitation or a ball or something especially um, fancy. But I think it'd be cool to bring that back, just a general invitation by hand. However, um, you can use these more casual ones as maybe a way of email. Um, so they didn't have email back in the eight, late 1800s, early 1900s. So um, if we can take this kind of template and use it for modern day use, that makes more sense without being pretentious about it, I would convert this into email. So that would be the way to do it. The dinner invitation, the blank, which may be used only for dinner. Mr. and Mrs. Huntington Jones request the pleasure of blank company at dinner on, on at eight o'clock on, is that for real? At 2000 Fifth Avenue. Invitations to receptions and teas. Invitations to receptions and teas differ from invitations to balls in that the cards on which they are engraved are usually somewhat smaller. The words at home with capital letters are changed to will be at home with small letters and the time is not set at the hour. Also, except on very unusual occasions, a man's name does not appear. The name of the debutante for whom the tea is given is put under that of her mother and sometimes under that of her sister or the bride of her brother. For example, Mrs. James Town, Mrs. James Town Jr., Miss Pauline Town will be at home on Tuesday, the 8th of December from four until six o'clock, 2000 Fifth Avenue. I love this stuff. Mr. Town's name would probably appear with that of his wife if he were an artist and that the reception was given in his studio to view his pictures. Or if a reception were given to meet a distinguished guest, uh, such as a bishop or governor, in which case, in honor of the Right Reverend William Powell, or to meet His Excellency the Governor, is at the top of the invitation. Hmm. The formal invitation which is written. Look at their old-fashioned writing. When the formal invitation to dinner or lunch is written instead of engraved, note paper stamped with those uh, stamped with house or personal device is used. The wording and spacing must follow the engraved models exactly. 350 Park Avenue, um, Mr. and Mrs. John. I can't read the handwriting. 
Request the pleasure of Mr. and Mrs. Robert Gilding Jr.'s company at... Uh, I can't read it on Tuesday the 6th of December at 8 o'clock. It must not be written like that. So I kind of do like that spacing how they have it. it. Like just flows like that. It's still a standard invitation for weddings and stuff nowadays. That format. The foregoing example has four faults. One, letters in the third person must follow the prescribed form. This does not. Um, okay. Two, the writing is crowded against the margin. That's true. It's way more aesthetic on the top. Three, the telephone number should be used only for business and informal notes and letters. Where is there a phone number? Hmm. Mm -mm. Four, the full name John should be used instead of the initial J. Mr. and Mrs. is better form than Mr. and Mrs. Am I missing something? Is that oh, I see. The and is written out, not the symbol and. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. See where we're at. Recalling an invitation. If for illness or other reasons invitations have to be recalled, the following forms are correct. They are always printed instead of engraved, there being no time for engraving. Owing to sudden illness, Mr. and Mrs. John Huntington Smith are obligated to recall their invitations for Tuesday the 10th of June. What a lovely way to renege on a party. The form used when the invitation is posted, Mr. Uh, excuse me, postponed. Mr. and Mrs. John Huntington Smith regret exceedingly that owing to the illness of Mrs. Smith, their dance is temporarily postponed. When a wedding is broken off after the invitations have been issued, Mr. and Mrs. Benjamin Nottingham announced that the marriage of their daughter, Mary Catherine, and Mr. Gerald Atherton will not take place. Oh my god. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. Formal acceptance or regret. Acceptances or regrets are always written. An engraved form to be filled is vulgar. Nothing could be in worse taste than to flaunt your popularity by announcing that it is impossible to answer your numerous invitations without the time-saving device of a printed blank. If you have a dozen or more invitations a day, if you have a hundred, hire a staff of secretaries if need be, but answer by hand. The formal acceptance to an invitation, whether it is to a dance, wedding, breakfast, or a ball, is identical. Mr. and Mrs. Donald Lovejoy accept with pleasure Mr. and Mrs. Smith's kind invitation for dinner on Monday the 10th of December at 8 o'clock. The formula for regret, um, Mr. Club Window regrets extremely that a previous engagement prevents his accepting Mr. and Mrs. Smith's kind invitation for dinner on Monday the 10th of December. It's lovely. Mr. and Mrs. Timothy Carey regret that they are unable to accept Mr. and Mrs. Smith's kind invitation for dinner on Monday, the 10th of December. Okay, so different ways of saying I can't come. Um, so they are unable to accept or um, regrets extremely that a previous engagement prevents him from accepting. You can make an excuse, I guess, you know, due to an illness, what have you. And accepting an invitation, the day and hour must be repeated so that in case of a, a mistake, it may be rectified and prevent one from arriving on a day when is, he is not expected. But in declining an invitation, it is not necessary to repeat the hour. Oh, that's really interesting. Do we all catch that? When you're accepting an invitation, you repeat the date and hour so that you're all on the same page, and if you're declining, you don't have to bother doing that. Visiting card invitations. Um, 
Yeah, so remember we went over the visiting cards, and that was something that kind of stumped us and stumped me, um, which was, what the hell is a visiting card? What are you talking about? It's basically a, they used to have like business cards that was like blank like that, and it wasn't for business, it was a visiting card. And it was just like plain white, and it had your name on it. And we went over all the details about the names and stuff like that, and it would have an address on it. And when you come to visit people, their servant or whoever answers their door would have like a tray, and they had all these like fancy different trays and stands for visiting cards. And you know, you can always, uh, and you give it to them, and people, you know, <laughs> it's just so cute. It's an old fashioned thing that didn't know existed. But um, yeah, the servant or whatever will um is there, how did it go there's one where like they would actually take the invitation if she was accepting like let's say she was accepting and the invitation uh visiting card would like be brought by the servant and she would like say like okay like bring him into the uh, what is it called drawing room what do they call it and um but the lady of the house or person of the house can also say um have the servant say that they are um that they are not home, which doesn't mean that they aren't home physically, it just means that they aren't taking guests because saying like, she doesn't wanna see you right now is really rude. Like you have the right to your privacy and your home and your space. So if you are not at home, that just means that, you know, you leave your visiting card and she'll read it over later and get back to you. I think it's super cute. But anyway, so there's a visiting card invitations. With the exception of invitations to house parties, dinners, and luncheons, the writing of notes is passed. For an informal dance musical picnic, for a tea to uh, meet a guest, or for bridge, or lady uses her, a lady uses her ordinary visiting card. I gotta make visiting cards. I'm gonna write that down. So yeah, they went over in another stream, we went over all the specs for these visiting cards. Um, and so basically it would have just the plain name in the middle, Mrs. John, kind heart, and then it would have in the lower right hand corner, the address 350 Park Avenue. But it seems that for this, they, did they print or write this, but they were adding on to the visiting card by saying to meet Miss, Miss Millicent Gilding. <laughs> Millicent Gilding. What a fucking name, Millicent. And then they have over here on the lower left-hand corner um, dates and stuff. Tuesday, January 7th, dancing at 10 o'clock. Cute, cute. And here's another one at the uh, underneath it is another example where they have the date up top, Wednesday, January 8th, bridge at 4 o'clock, RSVP. Cute. I love that. This is why I need a visiting card. Just like write any little things on there. And it's not like a business card. It's like, I don't know. It's cute. Answers to invitations written on uh, visiting cards are always formally worded in the third person. Remember, everything's third person, precisely as though the invitation had been engraved. Invitations in the second person. The informal dinner and luncheon invitation is not spaced according to set words on each line, but is written merely in two paragraphs. Example, Dear Mrs. Smith, will you and Mr. Smith dine with us on Tuesday, the 7th of January at 8 o'clock? Hoping so much for the pleasure of seeing you. Very sincerely, Caroline Robinson Town. The informal note of acceptance or regret. Dear Mrs. Town, I will give... Uh, it will give us much pleasure to dine with you on Thursday, the 7th at 8 o'clock. Thank you for your kind thoughts. Sincerely yours, Margaret Smith. Um, uh, Stephen, he says, yeah, I'm subscribed. Do you have a Discord server? Um, yeah, actually, we do. Is there a way that you can, are you on like Twitter or whatever? Do you think you can message me and me or Jay? Um, and we can talk to you about Discord if you'd like. Um, on Twitter, I am the same thing. It's my name, Martina Mercota. 
and Jay, can you send your Twitter account in there? And uh, we'll, we'll give you the information about the art discord. Okay, I'll keep a lookout for that Twitter handle. Make sure I follow back. So the informal note of acceptance or regret would give us much pleasure to dine with you. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Townsend, my husband and I will dine with you on Thursday um, the 7th at 8 o'clock with greatest pleasure. Thinking, uh, thanking you so much for thinking of us. Dear Mrs. Town, see I like that. Thank you so much for thinking of us. That's what I would add. I love that. Um, Dear Mrs. Town, we are so sorry that we shall be unable to dine with you on the 7th as we have a previous engagement. With many thanks for your kindness and thinking of us very sincerely. Ethel Norman. Ethel, with these names. I can't with these names. Invitation to a country house. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I'm into that. Sounds like a plan. Um, to an intimate friend, dear Sally, will you and Jack and the baby and nurse, of course, come out the uh, 28th Friday and stay for 10 days. Morning and evening trains take only 40 minutes uh, and it won't hurt Jack to commute for the weekdays between the two Sundays. I am sure the country will do you and the baby good, or at least it will do me good to have you here. With much love, affectionately, Ethel Norman. I just love it because I can tell. I'm like, okay, 40 minutes. They're probably in like Croton Harmon or something. Um, to a friend of one's daughter, dear Mary, will you and Jim come on Friday the first uh, for the worldly dance and stay over Sunday? Muriel! Muriel asked me to tell you that Helen and Dick and also Jimmy Smith are uh, to be here and she particularly hopes that you will come too. The 320 from New York is the best train much, though there is a 420 and 516 in case Jim is not able to take the earlier one. Very sincerely, Alice Jones. I love that they take the time to look up the train schedules for people when inviting them somewhere. That is so cute. Um, it's hair, I can't with it right now. Confirming a verbal invitation. Okay, dear Helen, this note is merely to remind you that you and Dick are coming here for the worldly dance on the 6th. Mother is expecting you on the 320 train and we'll meet you here at the station affectionately. Muriel. <clears throat> Invitation to a house party at a camp. Okay. Dear Miss Strange, will you come up here on the 6th of September and stay until the 16th? It would give us all the greatest pleasure. There is a train leaving Broadway Station at 8.03 a.m., which will get you to Dutzville Junction at 5 p.m. Uh, and here in time for supper. It is only fair to warn you that the camp is very primitive. We have no luxuries, but we can make uh, you fairly comfortable if you like an outdoor life and are not too exacting. Please do not bring a maid or any clothes that the woods or weather can ruin. You need nothing but outdoor things. Walking boots if you care to walk, a bathing suit if you care to swim in the lake, and something comfortable rather than smart for evening. 
When they say smart, that means fancy, <laughs> if you care to dress for supper. But on no account bring evening or any good clothes. Hoping so much that camping appeals to you and that we shall see you on the evening of the 6th. Very sincerely yours, Martha. Martha Kindheart. Um... <laughs> I have some Jimmy Dean sausages in the fridge. Hearing that name makes me want to make some hot dogs with them. <laughs> it's funny. All right, where are we at? Okay, guys, I've got like seven minutes left before I'm out of here. So um, let me see. Yeah, let's finish up this chapter because we're almost done here and then we can start fresh the next um, etiquette stream. So then there is the invitation by telephone. Um, custom which has altered many ways and manners has taken away all, here's another word to look up, learn something new every day. Learn something new every day. What is this? Appropriate. 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 Harsh criticism or cen censor. Um, his films and the critical opprobrium they have generated. The public disgrace arising from someone's shameful conduct. Oh, I'm using this word. The opprobrium of being closely associated with thugs and gangsters. Wow. Thugs and gangsters. Archaic, an occasion or cause of reproach or disgrace. Wow, cool. Cool new word. Appropriate. Okay, customs which has altered many ways and manners has taken away all appropriate from the message by telephone and with exception of those of a very small minority of letter-loving hostesses. Me! Um, all informational invitations are sent and answered by telephone. Such messages, however, follow a prescribed form. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Is this Lennox 000? Will you please ask Mr. and Mrs. Smith if they will dine with... Mrs. Grantham Jones next Tuesday, the 10th at 8 o'clock. Mrs. Jones' telephone number is Plaza 12 Ring 2. The answer Mr. and Mrs. Huntington Smith regret that they will be unable to dine with Mrs. Jones on Tuesday, the 10th, as they are engaged for that evening. Love it. Busy. Or Will you please tell Mrs. Jones that Mr. and Mrs. Huntington Smith are very sorry that they will be unable to dine with her next Tuesday and thank her for asking them. Or please tell Mrs. Jones that Mr. and Mrs. Huntington Smith will dine with her on Tuesday the 10th with pleasure. Oh my God, Jay. <laughs> Steven, I love this new buddy who I have in here, Steven. Um, he says, we was gangs and shit. Um, Jay says, thugs and gangsters more like Democrats, am I right? <sighs> oh, shit. Um, okay. The formula is the same. Whether the invitation is to dine or lunch or play bridge or tennis or golf or motor or go on picnic. Motor. I love that they call it motor. Uh, will Mrs. Smith play bridge with Mrs. Gransom Jones this afternoon at the country club at four o'clock? Hold the wire, please. Mrs. Jones will play bridge with pleasure at four o'clock. In many houses, especially where there are several uh, grown sons or daughters, a blank form is kept in the pantry. Will blank blank with an M so you can fill it in on blank the blank at blank o'clock. Telephone number, acceptance, regret. Okay.
These slips are taken to whichever member of the family has been invited who crosses off regret or accept and hands the slip back for transmission by the butler or parlor maid or whoever is in, the, in duty in the pantry. Oh my God, I wish I had someone on duty in the pantry. Parlor maid. If Mr. Smith and Mrs. Jones are themselves telephoning, there is no long conversation, but merely, Mrs. Jones, is that you, Mrs. Smith or Sarah? This is Mr. Jones or Alice, excuse me, Mrs. Jones or Alice. Will you and your husband or John dine with us tomorrow at eight o'clock? And Mrs. Smith would say, I'm so sorry we can't. We are dining with Mabel. Mabel, I gotta start doing my forehead, Mabel. I rub it out. Whenever I make like a wrinkle in my face, I like rub it out. Ah, rub that shit out. It's gone. Just don't make that face anymore. Um, or we have people coming here. Invitations to a house party are um, often as are often as not telephoned. Um, invitations to a house party are often as not telephoned. Hello, Ethel. Ethel. Hello, Ethel. This is Alice. Will you and Arthur come on the 16th over for Sunday? The 16th? That's Friday. We'd love to. Will you take the two, uh, 320 train, etc.? Look at this lady. Look at this lady here. Oh, shit. What am I happening here? What am I doing? Look at that lady at her door. <laughs> Donut said, butler, that'd be me. I'm on duty in the pantry. Like, and what's with in the pantry? In? How many square feet? LOL. <laughs> I would totally work in the pantry. Look at this lady. A gem of a house may be uh, no size at all, but its lines are honest and it's painting and window curtains in good taste and it's bell is answered promptly by a trim maid with a low voice and quiet courteous manner oh my god i love it i'm tweeting that by a trim maid with a low quiet voice courteous manner and there's the equivalent for a man in there. <laughs> I love that. Okay, cool. So that leads us to next etiquette stream, um, which looks super fun. God, why does it get so messed up when I do that? is um, the well-appointed house. How exciting. We have Becoming Furniture. Um, all sorts of stuff. How many servants for correct service? Um, the housekeeper, the organization of a great house, the butler, the butler in a small house, what the butler wears, the house footman, the cook, the kitchen maid, the housemaid, the parlor maid, uniforms, the ladies maid, why two maids, dress of a ladies maid, the valet, the nurse, courtesy to one's household, the house with limited service, the one maid alone, the management of servants, those who have persistent trouble, Look at that beautiful image. Cool. Etiquette of service. A lot of fun stuff. Uh, so we will continue on with that next time. I want to see if I missed any pictures in the other chapters. Because I didn't see any pictures before. Um. Yeah, these were the cards. The visiting cards. See. Oh my god, is this the like things not to say? It was so funny. Oh, I don't even think it was the door slammer that I was laughing at. Door slammer was amazing, but it was this too that I just like laughed my ass off. Um. 
god, I screen cap this. It's too funny. <laughs> um, okay, let's see if there's anything else. Ah, the top lofties. Remember them? Millicent Gilding to meet Millicent Gilding. Mrs. Top Lofty requests the pleasure of Miss Rosalie Gray's company at the theater and at a dance on Tuesday, the 6th of January at 8.15 p.m. RSVP. All right, cool. We didn't miss too many good pictures, so cool, cool. I got to, like, now go back and forth. The toe. <laughs> the toe, Jay. Yeah, that was when they went to the theater. That's right. Please move your toe. <laughs> Whose story was that? Was that Dan? Oh my god, Dan's probably going to be in the YouTube premiere one. Anyway, yeah, so that's my point is that, oh, cool. I'm at 12.67%. Almost 13%. It ends tomorrow. Um, but yeah, guys uh if you are watching on youtube this is a premiere but i'm in the chats and you can still send Streamlabs donations you can do personal donations and paypal and you can still do super chat so help me out and uh if you enjoy the etiquette streams i do i always learn something new and then we have the art history streams that we do um which i always learn something new haven't been doing some alchemy streams. I want to kind of get back into the groove with the alchemy. It's just such like intense material that sometimes I'm like, oh, like gotta prepare for it. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, it was fun. It's nice to meet new people. Steven, who please join us on YouTube, and uh, I'll DM you about the Discord. Nice to meet you. Glad to find you. And I'll see you guys tomorrow, probably on YouTube. Um, bye.